I guess I would like to know. What do you know about me that I don't? You... You were never supposed to exist, Roxas. What? How could you even say such a thing? Even if it were true? These moments are probably some of the first that pop into a lot of people's heads when they think about Roxas' theme. A boy who, in more ways than one, never truly lived to begin with. All he wanted was to have agency over his destiny, but apparently all he really amounted to was the lesser half of a boy he never met, yet somehow owed everything to. Sora. In that last moment, Roxas and the player both have no choice but to accept his tragic fate, and the icing on the cake of this incredibly so wrenching moment is this one song. There's a lot more history to this piece than meets the eye. Much like my previous video, focused on Xion's themes, today we'll be skimming through the history of different arrangements of Roxas' theme. However, this time, we'll be taking a very in-depth look at just official arrangements, instead of focusing on fan arrangements. And also let's pretend that it hasn't been 5 months since that Xion video, oops. For how short and simple it is, Roxas' theme became one of the most beloved tracks in the series. Perhaps due to how hard it hits you when it first plays, or how well it illustrates Roxas' character. With regard to it, Yoko Shimomura, the series composer, mentioned that the process of composing it was very straightforward, being one of the fastest pieces that she composed in her whole life, and that it was a literal gift from the gods of music. Hmm, Yoko, how can it be a gift from the gods of music if you are the god of music? I don't think that checks out. A very soft piano accompaniment and choir can be heard alongside this gentle flute melody that tugs at the heartstrings. This flute is established as the primary thematic instrument for the character, something that's further reflected in the 358 Days Over 2 Dearly Beloved, which also features it as its melodic instrument, since Roxas is the protagonist of that story. The entire structure of this version can be reduced into intro, Chorus, It's really just that simple. Along the years, many different official versions of this theme were arranged by other musicians, showcasing how different approaches to the same theme can differ in fascinating ways while building on top of previous history. Let's take a look through all the ways Roxas' theme has been present in the music of Kingdom Hearts since then. The Other Promise Following the release of Kingdom Hearts 2, the game received a final mix edition with additional features. One of the new elements was a battle against Roxas during the story in one last attempt to challenge his right to exist, whereas in the original version of the game, this occurrence was just a cutscene. For this event, Shimomura was asked to compose a better rendition of Roxas' theme, which was not as simple to write as the former version. The request from series director Tetsuya Nomura was that Shimomura arranged a flashier piano version of the character theme and to make it more intense, in contrast to how fragile the original was. From the request, Shimomura went forward, shaping the piece into something like a piano concerto. She then thought the initial result was enough, but Nomura wasn't satisfied. He insisted that she made it even more exciting, to which she struggled to deliver, needing to fill her mind with sad memories to an exhausting degree, according to her. The end result, though, was a masterful display of Shimomura's range when pushed beyond her limits.
I bet when she looks back at it, she probably just feels really tired from the whole process. Maybe composing a piano concerto is kind of like giving birth, except your boss is somehow pressuring you into making your newborn be more intense. Who knows, maybe screaming at a mother giving birth is the secret to making a baby super popular. Uh, so while Roxas's original character theme can be summed up by an intro and a chorus, the other promise has an intro, uh, the chorus plays twice, and it also has a whole new addition. So it's significantly longer and also contains a new section that prepares for the loop. Dramatica In 2008, Shimomura released an album with some of her greatest works reorchestrated, called Dramatica, the very best of Yoko Shimomura. Surprisingly, the album was mostly arranged by other musicians, leading us to the first official reimagining of Roxas' melody. Natsumi Kamioka's The Other Promise was perhaps the most influential arrangement when it comes to future deviations from the originals. It's arranged in a way that clearly is meant to package together Roxas's bass theme and The Other Promise. Much like Sachiko Miyano's future Vector to the Heavens from the Memoria album would later pack together Shion's character theme and battle theme. However, after the first chorus, uh, that being in Roxas's melody, Kampioka included the addition of an entirely new extension of what I've been calling the bridge, likely to ease out the repetitiveness of the piece and to raise the intensity for a final repeat of the chorus, unlike the original, which would lower the intensity to prepare for the loop instead. This new segment is what really makes the Dramatica version stand out among the others. This arrangement would later return to be performed at the Kingdom Hearts World Tour concert, and thus has two official recordings, again, just like Memoria's Factor to the Heavens. A variation of this arrangement was also created for the Kingdom Hearts First Breath concerts, which had the prompt of mostly utilizing brass and woodwind instruments. This resulted in a ton of interesting renditions of many pieces, including this one, and the strings from Kamioka's arrangements were all replaced with brass instruments. This adaptation was made by Sohei Kano, also responsible for the arrangements of Traverse Town and Lazy Afternoons from the same concert. Piano Collections Up next, we have two different versions that came sort of bundled together. The Kingdom Hearts Piano Collections arrangements of Roxas and The Other Promise were yet again arranged by someone other than Shimomura, this time Sachiko Miyano. This rendition of Roxas is very faithful to the original game version, perhaps in a way that's even softer than the original. The prolonged intro really soothes in the anticipation for the melody, the drop-like low notes set a heavy dramatic mood, and the harmonic and textural differences that happen in the repeat of the chorus are intense in a beautifully melancholic way. However, it ends on a very soft and somehow optimistic note. Perhaps this is the most salty suite of all their renditions. Meanwhile, the arrangement of The Other Promise is extremely interesting in its own right. 
Not only does it bring its own innovations from the start, adding a very fun variation to the opening arpeggios and further piano arpeggiations later in its duration, but it also includes the aforementioned addition from Kamioka's Dramatica arrangement, adapted for a piano solo. This marks the first instance of a Piano Collections version of a piece taking inspiration from a rendition of a track that did not originate in the games. It's also curious that, despite being majorly influenced by the dramatic arrangement, these piano pieces were actually arranged by Sachiko Miyano and not Natsumi Kamioka herself, the person who arranged the dramatic version despite her also being involved with the piano collections. It's almost like building this theme was a team effort between Shimomura, Kamioka, and Miyano. If we were to talk about prevalent melodies in the Piano Collections album, it wouldn't be wrong to say that Roxas is one of the most reutilized ones. In fact, those of you who played Melody of Memory might have recognized something interesting in one of the Piano Collections tracks. Neither Roxas or The Other Promise made their way into the game's tracklist, but if you pay attention, you can actually hear a brief callback to Roxas' melody in Sora, Allegro con Brio. And it doesn't stop there. You can also hear a very similar callback in the Sinister Sound Down arrangement from the Field and Battle Piano Collections album, which was not in Melody of Memory, unfortunately. Come on, just give us the Piano Collections DLC, Nomura. I'm the only one who wants it, but that's one guaranteed customer. Both of these were also arranged by Sachiko Miyano. It seems she really understands Roxas' musical involvement with Twilight Town as a setting and Sora as a character, while being mindful of previous versions of the theme. The official recordings of the Piano Collections arrangements were performed by Hiroyuki Nakayama, who has been loosely involved as a performer for the series since then. For an interview alongside Shimomura in 2014, he was requested to play The Other Promise on the piano. However, likely due to needing the piece to be shorter for the sake of the interview, a modification of the original arrangement was performed instead. This included a new variation of the intro arpeggios and chord progression. Nakayama utilized a transcription of the chord progression and arpeggios from the chorus of the original 2FM version without the main melody and played that as a replacement for the repetition of the intro. This repurposed chord progression served as a variation of said intro, instead of serving as the harmony to the chorus, which was a really cool way to repurpose something from the original arrangement in a way that sounded unique, but still made sense in context. Thank you. 
less confusing terms, he played the piano accompaniment from a specific part of the original version during a completely different section in order to include as many elements from the piece as possible while keeping the arrangement condensed. There's also a few rhythmic differences on the faster arpeggios elsewhere. A huge chunk of this piece was also cut out, including the entire section from the Piano Collections version that was originally derived from the dramatic arrangement. It's likely that Hiroyuki arranged these differences himself, but these alterations could also have been arranged by Shimomura. Something very similar happened in Shinya Kiyozuka's piano performance of Roxas at the Tokyo Game Show livestream for Melody of Memory in 2020. Perhaps due to similar reasons, this variation of the piano collection's arrangement features a much faster tempo, differences in rhythm, and other seemingly improvised elements. Since earlier in his performance, he also played an improvisation on a Welcome to Wonderland from the Piano Collections, it's safe to say that this was a stylistic choice from the performer that resulted in a very interesting deviation overall. The last noteworthy observation about the Piano Collections arrangements is their use in the recoded 2.5 movie, marking one of the first times that a piece from outside the games was used in-game. This usage was also interesting because it's an edit made of both The Other Promise and Roxas from the Piano Collections, starting from the climax of The Other Promise and then transitioning into the beginning of Roxas. The arrangement of Roxas was also altered to include a repeat bar, or in other words, a loop, to make it last longer and fit the scene better. Symphonic Fantasies Moving on from the piano versions, we have the Symphonic Fantasies arrangement by John Valtanen, which was part of a longer Kingdom Hearts suite. I discovered while researching for this video that there was a second Symphonic Fantasies concert in Tokyo in addition to the first one in Cologne, with some alterations to the arrangements made. Thankfully for this video, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the The Other Promise section when it comes to the arrangement itself, but it sounds like the flute stands out a lot less on the Tokyo performance in comparison. This arrangement is very different stylistically from all the other ones. Much like the Dramatica rendition, it was written for a full orchestra. The pianist performing is also Benjamin Nuss, who's been involved as a pianist for the series for some time. It doesn't seem to take influence from the any arrangements other than the original one, and utilizes chromatism in a way that's very unlike Shimomura, which makes it extremely interesting to listen to and compare. It also has much variation when it comes to the dynamics and sheer musical scale of each section, 
making it extremely expressive and energetic. It's full of subtle, rhythmic, and textural differences as well, but keeps the flute as the highlighted melodic instrument alongside the strings, at least in the Cologne performance. It's also important to note that this arrangement of The Other Promise is only a section of a much bigger arrangement that does include many other pieces from the series. Birth by Sleep With the end of Cage 2 and Days, Roxas' story had seemingly come to a close. However, Roxas' theme persisted in other, more subtle ways. For example, for the character Ventus introduced in Birth by Sleep, Shimomura initially had a completely fresh song she was writing for him, but Nomura uh, instructed her to include elements from Roxas' and Sora's themes, as well as Dearly Beloved since Ventus is heavily linked to both of them. Actually, and this is something that's been theorized for quite some time in the YouTube comments, I discovered that if you play Ventus's theme backwards, you can actually hear... Ventus's theme backwards? Crazy. Uh, but yes, his theme is clearly incorporates elements from Roxas and Sora. They're not reversed though, and I don't know where people get this from. In a similar fashion, Vanitas' theme also includes elements from Roxas and Sora's themes, and they're also not reversed, <laughs> if anyone still has any doubt about that. But it was composed and said by Takeharu Ishimoto. Perhaps the decision to have these two antithetical themes be composed by different people was intentional, with the intention of avoiding them from sounding too similar. And they definitely do give up very opposite vibes, despite sharing the same musical material as a foundation. World Tour In the Heroes and Heroines character medley from the World Tour concert, Roxas got a new arrangement for his character theme. The only notable differences are the replacement of the piano with a harp, and a change to the intro that serves as a transition between Nominee's theme and Roxas. Kingdom Hearts 3 Cage 3 was the game where Roxas finally got a break from being stuck in Sora's heart limbo, and where his theme got a break from being stuck inside amalgamations of other characters. Nah, just kidding. Roxas' Return and Hearts as One, arranged by Shotaro Shima, are tracks that transition into each other and, in a way, are one and the same. Roxas' Return appropriately plays for the scene where Roxas is brought back, and contains a section that's extremely reminiscent of the original 2FM version. Before playing around with elements of Organization 13 and Sora's, Roxas, and Shion's themes to fit the occurrences of the scene.
Meanwhile, Hearts as One acts as a medley of The Other Promise, Vector to the Heavens, Sora, and Organization 13. Sorry, Roxas, it's a combo song again. When it comes to The Other Promise, it's showcased in a much more optimistic light than any of the previous versions, including percussion, brass, uh, utilized in a percussive manner this time, unlike the harmonic and melodic use in the first breath version, and with other small touches that give it a much more triumphant sound than its melancholic predecessors. Hearts as One later returns in the form of Overture to the Decisive Battle, arranged by Yasunori Nishiki. This was a medley of many of the final battle themes in Cage 3, and it played in the World of Trace concerts. Nishiki was only responsible for arranging Forza Finale in the actual game, but here he was allowed to get his hands a bit more dirty. He cleverly utilizes the rocks section of Vanitas' theme to transition into Hearts as One. and after Vector to the Heavens plays, returns the piece to how the other promise sounded like in 2FM, something that the Cage 3 version does not do before moving on into Forza Finale. I'd say he definitely did his homework. From here on out, we'll be talking about some pieces that just utilize brief elements from Roxas' theme. Similar to how Sora, Allegro con Brio, and Sinister Sundown from the Piano Collections did. First off, we have Dearly Beloved Forest Memory from Cage 3. This has been stated, or at least heavily implied by Shimomura, to have originally been planned as the title screen Dearly Beloved for Cage 3. I've talked about this in other videos, but this track never plays in completion in the game itself, but it can be heard fully in other places like the soundtrack. What's really interesting about it is that Shimomura very subtly incorporates elements from the hearts hidden within Sora, those being Shion, Vantus, and Roxas. The last track I'll talk about is kind of a bonus. Shimomura had a brief period where she was uploading special arrangements to her YouTube channel at the start of the quarantine, sometimes even collaborating with other musicians through the internet. One of these special arrangements was a piece of Dearly Beloved, which was later adapted into a piece of Dearly Beloved Christmas version. The first, non-Christmassy piece, is somewhat similar to the Forest Memory arrangement from Cage 3, in the sense that it utilizes and adapts elements from Roxas and Shion's themes into it, a concept that Shimomura seems to be quite fond of. When it comes to Roxas' theme, it has clearly come a long way. By independently and uniquely encompassing Roxas' character and saving the theme's usage for more introspective and philosophical moments in Cage 2's story, Shimomura utilized simplicity in a way that established his personality and his arc perfectly. 
while her battle arrangement, The Other Promise, evolved the theme in a way that showcased a certain duality, anger, and resentment of the character in one final attempt to take his life back. Because of this, the pieces were extremely successful and resonated with fans. Up until the piano collections, arrangements of Roxas' themes seemed to have the direction of paying mind to previous versions, in order to innovate them in their own ways. The continuity between Shimomura's, Kamioka's, and Miyano's arrangements are very easy to see and were implemented very organically. However, from that point on, it got mostly reduced to being part of combo themes, highlighting Roxas' connections to other characters. At this point, a lot of these characters are packaged deals, so it makes sense in that way to bind them together musically, and this seems to be the current philosophy when it comes to arranging for the franchise. On the other hand, Perhaps it may take away from the theme's ability to shine and be developed by itself and truly live to its potential. Personally, I'd love to see things like Kamioka's melodic variation of the ending section in Dramatica being developed in new arrangements of old themes, new melodies being developed that are derived from these, but not necessarily the same. I think a good example of this is Shimomura's arrangement of Dawn of Hope from Kingdom Hearts 3, which utilizes many familiar elements like Rage Awakened and Organization 13, but still feels fresh and exciting through the addition of new phrases. Which of these arrangements moves you the most? Were there any versions showcased in this video that you hadn't heard before? And what did you think about the implications from how his theme was developed in each of them? I'd love to know everyone's take on these. Just please don't ask if Yozora's theme can be heard if you play it backwards or something. It hurts when people ask these kind of things. Thanks for watching. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you check out my video analysis on fan arrangements of Shion's themes over the years, as well as my discussion of the Master of Masters and Yozora's themes. Of this video, I'd like to share a brief performance of the Piano Collection's arrangements that I recorded a few years ago. I'd also like to thank everyone who's been supporting me on Ko-Fi or just by sharing or liking my videos. I'll have the names of everyone who's been supporting me on Ko-Fi at the end of these videos from now on. I'll leave a link in the description in case anyone else is also interested in supporting me. When it comes to this performance you guys are about to watch, I'd re-record it again in higher quality, but I'm frankly just rusty when it comes to performing, so I hope you enjoy it like it is. See you soon.